All right, guys, let's talk about weak points in the steering system. If you watched my last video that was all about lifts and alignment specs, you would remember that the camber and caster is actually adjusted by your upper control arm mounts up here. Now, when you get upper control arm from 404parts.com or CalMini, they'll come with urethane bushings, and those are pretty tough. But for the most part, those are going to hold the camber and caster adjustment very well. So the question comes down to the tie rods and the rest of the steering system and how it can hold the toe-in adjustment. So I've went ahead and I've lifted this front tire off the ground. And the best way to illustrate what is going on is by grabbing your tire at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock and shaking it back and forth. And what you want to look for is any flex in the tie rod adjusters and the tie rod ends as the inner axe with the center link here and into the idler arm and into these bushings. So mine is all reinforced so I would not expect to see a lot of movement in any of these joints. So you can see some movement there but let's go ahead and go step by step through the steering system and identify some weak points. So the tie rod adjuster is definitely a weak point. Not so much for holding an alignment, but for any type of off-roading where you might end up hitting a rock or making an impact. I have broken a ton of these things, and they're not fun to replace on the trail. So heavy-duty tie rod adjusters, for my opinion, are a must if you ever go off-road. On either end of these tie rod adjusters, you've got the tie rod ends, which is a little ball joint. you got a ball joint here and one inboard behind the tire here. Any ball joint is going to have some amount of slop and play. Now the tie rod end has the ball joint which attaches to that center link. This is a heavy duty center link so it has a solid bolted connection that attaches it to this idler arm. Now the stock version of the center link actually has another ball joint here. What I typically saw when I had the stock set up is by shaking the tire at 3 and 9 o'clock is this end of the dog bone feature on the center link would actually flex upwards. It would twist on this ball joint which would then flex the idler arm upwards and inside the idler arm is actually plastic bushings so that would also allow it to flex on this axis. So from my experience the key to maintaining a solid toe-in alignment is to address this center link and how this dog bone feature causes a twisting motion. That problem is increased by doing lifts. As I said in my first video, doing a lift makes this angle sharper on the tie rod. So that means that if your tire is hitting on a rock or if it's just vibrating from the road, instead of putting this tie rod adjuster in straight compression, it's actually going up at an angle. When it goes up at an angle, you're putting more force upwards, which induces more twisting. So for my idler arm, I have a tab on the top. I drilled out the taper fitting on the bottom, and it has a grade 8 bolt going through. I have bronze bushings on the inside of this idler arm so there is no play from that axis. And then I also have a bolt-on idler arm brace which has a gusset that comes along the bottom and supports it at the bottom of the axis. The driver's side has a very similar setup with the tie rod adjuster. The tie rod ends both have ball joints that need to be replaced from time to time that add slop. The stock version of the center link actually has a stud connection into what is called the pitman arm which goes to the actual steering box. The stud connection doesn't actually flex as much but it's always good to go ahead and upgrade it to a bolted connection. I also added a tab on top of my pitman arm but the pitman arm in stock configuration is very strong. If you look at how it's connected to the steering box it's a spline shaft and it has a very large nut and lock washer that holds it in place. So you really don't need any reinforcement along the pitman arm on the driver's side. The first option that I'll give you is what I call the Franken steering kit, or going piecemeal, just upgrading individual components along the way. On the screen is the list of components I used. Bandit idler arm bushings are not necessarily sexy, but they do a great job of eliminating slop. I used the Total Chaos idler arm brace, but these are no longer available. You can get similar products from Calmini or 4x4 parts. Heavy duty tie rod adjusters are a must. You can see the two on the left are much larger than the stock version, which is the thinner one in the middle. The bent one to the right of that is actually a trail repair I had to make one time by welding a tube to the broken tie rod adjuster. 
And on the far end is a tie rod end. I use Moog brand with a greasable ball joint for my outers that are closer to the wheels. And for my inner tie rod ends, I use Duralast because I needed more frame clearance with my aftermarket center link. The end of my grassroots 4x4 center link eliminates the ball joint connection and has spherical bearings pressed in instead. To adapt my idler and pitman arms to a through bolt connection, I used a hardened oil light flange bearing so that the bolted connection wears against a serviceable bearing instead of the arms themselves. Unfortunately, that grassroots center link was the only standalone center link option. So if you go the piecemeal route, you're going to be stuck with a stock center link unless you feel comfortable modifying it yourself or you find someone that is willing to do a custom one off center link. If you'd rather pay a lump sum up front and get a kit that's designed to work together, Cal Mini has a decent option at around $550. Now I don't have any direct experience with this kit, but just looking at the components and the design of it, you can see that the idler arm and idler arm brace and the bushings are combined into one unit. The center link is completely redesigned to eliminate the dog bone shaped feature on the end of the stock center link, and this should greatly reduce the amount of upward flexing and cantilever action that you get from the stock center link. It also includes heavy duty tie rod adjusters, but you have to reuse your existing tie rod ends or you'd have to buy your own tie rod ends if you wanted to upgrade those ball joints. The ball joints on the end of this center link are also serviceable, so you can service any type of connection without having to replace the entire component. So if you got enough money to try and make your truck completely bomb proof, take a look at the King Kong steering kit from Total Chaos. Total Chaos is no longer manufacturing these kits, but you can still get them through 4x4parts.com, but they're pricey at almost $1400. If you look at the center link, it's completely custom fabricated with double shear tabs. These double shear tabs are designed to interact with their heavy duty tie rods that replace the tie rod end ball joints with heim joints. It includes an idler arm brace that works with a custom gusseted idler arm and bushings and the pitman arm is also custom fabricated and gusseted. Now I don't have any direct experience with this kit because you've seen what I put on my truck but everything that I've read online from people that actually spent the money on it has been positive. Just looking at the kit it looks pretty tough but you'd have to do a lot of off-roading to justify the cost. All right, so what is my final recommendation? Just like anything, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish, but here's a couple things to consider. If you're gonna do a suspension lift in the front with upper control arms, you're gonna need a center link solution. If you're gonna go with larger tires, and especially if they're expensive tires, and if you're gonna be off-roading at all, you're gonna need a center link solution. Now as our trucks are getting older and older, more manufacturers are dropping out of the marketplace. So I pieced together an entire steering kit several years ago and that was possible because of the grassroots center link that was available by itself. That's no longer an option. So you need to decide early on with your truck, are you going to do suspension lifts, are you going with bigger tires, and how much off-roading are you going to be doing? If you're going to be doing any of those things, then you need to go ahead and start looking at the Cal Mini kit or the Total Chaos King Kong steering kit. I'll let you decide how much money you're willing to spend on your truck and how much abuse you think that you'll be putting it through. So if you're going to be keeping stock tires and stock suspension and just adjusting your torsion bars as they are, and if you're going to be doing very light or no off-roading at all, then you could just piece together a few things with the idler arm brace, the idler arm bushings, freshen up all your ball joints with new tie rod ends, and then you can get the heavy duty tie rod adjusters. So if you've managed to watch the entire video so far, I appreciate you tuning in. I hope I answered all of your questions on steering systems on first gen Nissan Xterras, but if you have any further questions, please comment below and I'll be sure to answer them. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content of these videos, as I have a lot of Xterra knowledge that I'd like to pass along to the next generation of Nissan modders. Also, leave comments below if you have any suggestions for future videos. Thanks for watching.